One of the most important features of any relational database is its ability to police what data gets entered into your tables. SQL constraints define some of the rules for entry into your tables, and it's pretty common that you might decide to add, drop, or change those rules after a table has been created, so let's take a look at how to do that. Here's the basic syntax for adding a constraint, in this case, a primary key. First, we tell the database which table we're going to be changing. Then we tell it that we're adding a constraint and what type of constraint we're adding, and finally what that constraint is. In this example, we're telling it that the primary key for this table will now be a combination of two columns, call1 and call2. The format is pretty similar for adding other types of constraints. Here, we're adding a foreign key. We've got a whole separate video on those, so check out the link up on the top if you need a refresher. But again, we're telling the database which table we're altering, telling it that we're adding a foreign key constraint, and naming that constraint users fk, and then telling it that this constraint should be on the user ID column and reference the user ID column in the users table. This will allow rows to be added to the orders table only if they contain a user ID that is also found in the users table. Here, we're adding a check constraint, which allows data to be entered only if the value in the revenue column is positive. So again, we're altering the orders table, adding a constraint titled check revenue positive, and then telling the database it's a check constraint and telling it to allow the row only if the value in the revenue column is greater than or equal to zero. Dropping a constraint works similarly. We alter the table and then tell the database which constraint we'd like to drop. To add and drop constraints at the same time, we can combine the add and drop commands into a SQL transaction. For example, let's say we want to change a primary key. We don't want our table to be without a primary key, even for a short time, and many database management systems won't even allow that. But we can execute the replacement by putting the drop and then add commands into a transaction using begin, then the drop statement, then the add statement, and then commit. We might also sometimes want to rename constraints to make their function clearer. We can do this with the rename constraint command. As you can see, this works pretty much identically to the add constraint and drop constraint commands. All right, so we've covered the basics of adding and dropping constraints, and you can find more details and examples in our blog. There's a link to that article in the video description. But one thing that we haven't talked about is the fact that with many relational databases, making schema changes like this does mean taking your database offline. Now, for small businesses, that's probably not a big deal. You just schedule some maintenance downtime during off-peak hours. But for larger businesses and enterprises, even a few minutes of off-peak downtime can mean a lot in lost revenue and make it harder to hit your SLAs. So if the idea of taking your production database offline for any amount of time sounds scary to you, you might want to check out our video on zero downtime schema changes. I'll put a link to that in the video description too.